Welcome in, everybody. The day is finally here. It is our series you have all been waiting for with bated breath. Fogman does mascots. And let me just tell you how this got started. This got started, how many things at In This League get started by me making one offhand comment and the Welsh saying that, uh, saying that I knew how the mascot dinger for the Colorado Rockies came about. And then the Welsh made, of course, many, many jokes about how much I love mascots, how into mascots I am, and how I know the history of all of them, which was not true. But I am more than happy to learn the history of the mascots and to bring that stuff to you. But I think to do this series in true in this league fashion, it can't just be me sitting here telling you about the mascots. We have to have somebody else in here to make comments, to ask me questions. So that is why joining me for all of these series is going to be uh, my partner in crime, my best friend, the Welsh. Go ahead and come on in here. The Welsh, let's get it. Are you happy to be here? How in God's name did I get wrangled into this? Probably the same way I got wrangled into doing this, you know, because you wrangled me in here. I wrangled you back. That's how we're doing this. It's an ITL special. You got to love it, right? By the way, the photo is everything. You know what? Uh, uh, it's the best. I don't want to be here, but the photo that our boy Jag had put together, I just, this is your series. Let me take this for a minute. <laughs> You guys saw it in the open. I want everyone just to simmer on this for one more second. Amazing. 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 Absolutely yeah. amazing. And, and I will say it was my idea. It was amazing. That is what we're working with the artwork. We've got the uh, Bogman Does Mascots logo, which is fantastic. And, you know, not to be outdone, I, I've got something even better for you. I'll try to pull up and we'll do it at the end of the episode. That's going to be on merch. And let me tell you, you guys are going to love it. Not just Bogman does mascots. You're going to love the merch item that we have or the logo that we can put on stuff. But yes, Bogman did wrangle me up here. Its series has evolved in different ways, but Bogman does the NL West today. And I'm here and I don't know what I'm in for. I mean, you are the resident mascot historian. You love them. It's your passion. You have a logo. You have merch. You've got, you've got a team that has been behind you helping curate this stuff. I mean, Bogman's passion for mascots is truly showing by this incredible artwork and this beautifully open <laughs> polo that you're wearing with right. another t-shirt under it. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's a, in this league shirt underneath it. So, uh, but, but All yes, right. so this is my professional look right here. I would look, don't I look professional? Well, you look very, you look you hair look slick back. It's not all over the place. Beard you, is trimmed look exactly how I expect a mascot historian to look. Oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. All I right, mean, this I... is your series. This is your series. Okay. Bogman does the NL West, so apparently we're doing an entire division for this series. So, Bogman, it's it's all you, man. I'm, I'm here to react, I guess. You know what I did very professionally was I made a PowerPoint for this. Like a oh true professional. God. Oh my so, God. Are you serious? We are going to have a PowerPoint. So let me bring it up and we will get to the action right now. All right. The way we're going to do this series is, uh, you know, I'm not going to just tell you about the mascot. I'm oh. also going to tell you how the team got their name. Because I think that I think that is just as interesting as mascots, and it feeds to why the mascot most of the time is a mascot, but also it's sometimes, just as interesting. You're right. It's sometimes as it's completely different too, and there's just a weird mascot for a team that makes no sense at all, like a Reddit post that may or may not have said, "Why the fuck is the Diamondbacks mascot a bobcat when they are snakes?" It's it's so. a great question. I mean, it's a as much as I agree with the history of this is about the same line, there's one thing that I truly do have interest in. It's why in the shit the decisions <laughs> being made are being made. Why a giant <laughs> baseball is the Mets logo. Whatever that green thing is right there that's hovering over you on the couch. And why is a bobcat 
the mascot for the Diamondbacks? Those we're gonna are get into questions. It. Okay, those are the questions I am very curious about. So um, you have answers, apparently. I do, and we are going to start with not the Arizona Diamondbacks. We're not going to go alphabetical. Oh. We're going to go with the reason that we started this off. Let's start with the Colorado Rockies because Dinger is the mascot of the Colorado Rockies. So let's yes. start in Colorado. And the very first thing you need to know about why they were the Rockies is uh, in 1989, they were granted an expansion team. Uh, the name was not only a reference to the Rocky Mountains, but uh, was also used by a, an incredibly unsuccessful NHL franchise that was in Denver before the avalanche named the Welsh, the Colorado Rockies. And here what is franchise? A, an NHL franchise, a, a oh. hockey franchise. Oh, okay. uh, so here is their logo. This is the original <laughs> Colorado Rockies logo. That, uh, that, this was, that looks like 70s. it was made in paint, like in Microsoft paint. <laughs> that is, that is so bad it looks it, worse than my idp logo uh that b since i haven't updated it yet so it is so no wonder it failed okay so this was a hockey team they were called the rockies gotcha. that's right so uh now there were other names considered now uh real quick before we go to the other names uh do you want to see a gentleman in a uh colorado rockies nhl uniform from the uh late 70s early 80s <laughs> do i yeah Look at this gentleman right here. You so. know what? Actually looks a little bit better. That man, that man is an American hero. That mustache. He is, Fs. This you know guy. what? If those jerseys work with that mustache is what I would say. That color scheme is very interesting. It's very like 1950s, like DC comic superhero bright colors. Um, that logo sure does pop with his mustache and him being a ginger. So, okay, I love it. I lo I'm I'm with it. You know what? Colorado Rockies, you guys screwed up. You should have gone with that color scheme. <laughs> um, well, I I actually kind of like the purple, and that's the Purple Mountains Majesty. You know, well, we know stuff. you do. You love Dinger. so. I, I do. Yeah, Dinger Dinger is great. But there were uh, there were other teams that were not at the major league level in the Denver, Colorado area. And here's the team names. This is between. Uh, you know, 1883 actually start uh, 1883 to 1885 is when baseball started in Denver, like just people playing baseball. But there were teams there. They went by the Denver's, the Colts, the Trojans, the Skyscrapers, the Gulfs, which makes no sense to me. The Gulfs, G U L F S, Gulfs, oh, Gulfs. Yes, uh, which they're not on the Gulf, so it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, maybe it's like a, you know, it'd be calling the uh, Diamondbacks or the Arizona Rainforest or something. Maybe Can I ask you, ironic. by the way, what, were they, was that one team name, were they the Colorado Denvers? They, they I think they were, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, it doesn't say <laughs> if they were going by Colorado, because I, I can't imagine they're the Denver Denvers, right? You know what? Of the, the names you've listed so far, that's the best name. The Colorado <laughs> Denver's the best of all of those. And the rest are lame. It's Rough Riders, which is no. every team in Canada is the Rough Riders. Oh, that's a great one. Uh, Mountaineers, Bears, uh, who were a, a AAA team for a long time. I guess the uh, Denver Bears. Then the Grizzlies and the Zephyrs, but none of them was a uh, was a major league team. And before 1993, there was a proposed Continental League. Uh, that was it was in the stages. I mean, there were uh, baseballs made up for the continent continental league and they were going to get a team in the sixties. And this is a map from a paper of all the cities that were going to get teams, major league teams. So Denver was, uh, they were, um, they were the there furthest no, West team. Yeah. And there's no teams in the mountain zone in the mountain time zone right, right now, uh, you know, according to, uh, this thing in 19 in, in the 1960s. So there were teams out on the West coast, the Dodgers and giants are already out there, but there were no, uh, you know, Arizona, Denver, uh, Utah. It was the time zone that was unrepresented. And so, that became the, the crying call of trying to get a team in Denver was the time zone without a team. So was this going to be a separate baseball league, like the UF, the USFL type of thing? Uh, yeah, th that's exactly what this was going to be. So they had teams in Denver, Minnesota, Indianapolis, some uh, places that still don't have uh, teams. There's still not a team in New Orleans. Well, it's and interesting if you, if you look at your picture, it says the founders of the league were Houston, Denver, Toronto, and New York. 
And then look, it says applicants. Or no, you're right. And then it's applicants and you see San Juan or is that yeah. just an island looks like it? But New Orleans was an applicant who, who to your point, doesn't have a team. That's in Montreal was also going to be. It's interesting seeing applicants versus the ones that were going to actually be leagues. So this was the what now what Denver team was applying for this? Was this the Colorado Denver's or no, this was going to be um, th th they didn't have they didn't get a team name for that. Okay. One. So, so they were just Denver was going to get a team, but then it was uh it didn't work out. They were going to be right. founders of the league. That was in the sixties. And then it, it, you know, went all the way through, they had minor league teams. Like we just rattled off those team names and stuff, but, uh, they, they didn't have, they didn't have a team until 1993 was when the Rockies came and the violet purple color was the first time that, uh, a team in baseball wore the color purple since the 1914 through 1917 New York Giants apparently wore uh, violet. I couldn't find any pictures of it, Welsh. So, uh, no but that brings us to Dinger. And uh, this is Dinger. And of course, he is born. He was born or hatched in uh, 1994. Now, once again, this is a story I told on the podcast. The reason that Dinger is a triceratops is the logo for the Colorado Rockies is because they found dinosaur bones while digging up Coors Field. And Denver is actually a hotbed for dinosaur bones. There's all kinds of dinosaurs there. But that is the reason. And, of course, we can see him. We're going to drop this clip in right now of Dinger being born. This is April 16th, 1994 at Mile High Stadium. Remember, they played where the Broncos played uh, for a while in Denver uh, for their first season before Coors Field was, at, Field was actually built. So here is the video of Dinger being hatched. I gotta love that, right? Well, that that's the best. Isn't it? So embarrassing. It's so unbelievably. It is just circa like Vegas show. Like, <laughs> like I'm born from an A. Like. <laughs> Okie doke. So uh Dinger was born from an egg. So is there more information on this dinosaur? Like they had this huge egg and it's a triceratops, and that's our team logo. But like, what did they find? Did they find it at the stadium site? Like I don't under I still don't understand the dinosaur. What so them? What dinosaur so did they find? A whole the skeleton? legend is, yeah. The, the 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 legend that that uh and this is the way I heard it from what they were saying on the um you know, during the broadcast was we're going to get something that looks like this, you know, right here, uh, a okay. triceratops a skull. Right. Uh, so that that's what everyone thinks when, OK, well, they find a, a triceratops skull. And, and I don't know if you know anything about um, digging and stuff like that when you're setting up a, a a job site or a construction site. But if you find something like this, you kind of have to bake, especially in the Denver area, you have to bake in time for scientists to come to exhume stuff because you're almost assuredly going to find stuff when, when you start digging deep. And in the Denver area, that's what we thought it was. But Vic Vela of uh, the um, Colorado Public Radio went to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and talked to dinosaur curator Joe Stritch about the bones that were actually found on the Coors Field construction site. And I'm sorry to say the Welsh. It is not it this that? gentleman right here. No, it is not this or the security guard watching it. Uh, the bones added up to about this amount right here. Um, that's like a that's maybe a cigar. Right, yeah, the, it it fits in a uh, iPhone case right so here. Wait, oh, wait, oh, <laughs> I found more bones like out in the woods before than this. <laughs> You're saying a cigar-sized bone prompted them to hatch a dinosaur mascot out of an egg on a field and wear purple? Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh. I mean, they found all kinds of uh, little fossils in the area, and this Triceratops skull right here, this was near Coors Field. But it was about five to ten blocks away, maybe five to ten miles away. It was in the area, but that is not what they found at Coors Field. This is what they found, and this is Vic Vela holding it. This is a gentleman right here. So that's you know, like uh, for size reference, it looks like three pebbles in a stick. 
that it, guy, that guy looks defi- like. that guy definitely is creating a new expected stat on baseball savant too by the way <laughs> he definitely looks like like one of those guys but yeah. the um dinger was inspired by the many fossils discovered while digging out course field which is not many it's this this is a description on the uh mlb mascots page on mlb.com um there were only a few actually on the stadium property but nearby there was a seven foot half ton triceratops right, skull which is this guy right here and they did kick around the name instead of Coors Field, Jurassic Park, uh, thanks to Oh, Dinger. my so, God. Why did they not? Is it because they the just Raptors. sold it to Coors? The Raptors already have. That's what they call their stadium is Jurassic Park. Who so I cares? Think, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm with you. Dude, uh, I, I, you sell that to, like, doesn't Disney own them or something like that? You, Universal, yeah. You go to uni- you get Universal to sponsor the stadium instead of Coors Beer, and you call it Jurassic Park absolutely huge missed opportunity. So the, the funniest thing I have found about Dinger who uh, Dinger will occasionally also hide behind home plate. You can see him at the end of games and stuff, but people in Denver don't really care for Dinger. Overall. Oh, really? <laughs> you yeah. Think? Uh, I mean, uh, I honestly, I think it's fairly interesting, you know, of like course they're, they're, you do. Of I, course well, you look, do. I, I like anything that's unique, right? Like uh, a yeah. baseball with a face on it is not very unique. I, this is at least unique to Colorado. So I kind of like it, but, um, this is from a Denver post article from 2007 written by William Porter. And this is retired Denver post columnist, Dick Kirk, a diehard baseball fan thought the mascot was an abomination and he called it an overgrown Muppet. Um, his other <laughs> it's comment, kind of bar- it's like Barney actually, his, his other comment about him was a guy in a chicken suit is funny, is funny. A guy dressed as a purple hairball is not a fan. Uh, a fan behind me commented the other night that dinger walks like an 18 month old with a load in its pants. <laughs> what a waste of carpet is how dinger was described. So dinger is not appreciated by, uh, a lot of the people never. I'm sure there's many people that like Dinger now. So, uh, but unfortunately, well, there you. are no pictures of me with Dinger. Although I have met a bunch of mascots, yes, have not is. had the pleasure. There's a picture with you and Dinger. Is there? Yeah, I couldn't I have, find it. I have it. Hold on. Wait right here. I downloaded it because it popped up on. Um, it popped up on a feed. Not till I wish I had been prepared for this. I would have had it out. I went through my Facebook and I couldn't find it. And that's where I thought it was. It was because it popped up as like a memory. And it was like 11 years ago, this happened. And I Bogman, I got to tell you, I immediately saved it. I was okay. like, I have to save it. So I have it forever. Uh, but it's going to come off of the phone if I can ever find it, which now. <laughs> Might have to be inserted after. Okay, we'll we'll drop it in there. So I couldn't find it. I I, and I looked for it. So I didn't go through my. I need to go through my Google, uh, you know, uh, file folder and 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 look for it there. I guess. But um, that brings us to we are now done with the Colorado Rockies. Are you satisfied with uh, what you got out of uh, Dinger the Triceratops here? Uh, I'm pretty satisfied, Bogman. Thank you for all of that great knowledge. I'm ready to move on. Let's go to our hometown. Ah. the Arizona Diamondback. Ah, and yes. I'm very excited for the upcoming snake mascot that we're going to get. It makes lots of sense. They, they found bones in Colorado, a big archaeological place. They're called the Rockies from mountains, but they picked a dinosaur. The Diamondbacks in Arizona have a giant snake and is a physical animal. Kind of tough to have a walking mountain as your mascot. I get it. Okay, found something else. Surely the Diamondbacks will have a snake as their mascot. Right, Bogman? Uh, yeah, that is incorrect. So, uh, gonna have a different mascot, but let's, let's take a look at how Arizona got a franchise. Now spring training started in Arizona in 1946, and this is Willie Mays in 1946. I believe maybe this is a little bit later, but this is Willie Mays, uh, at, in Arizona. I think this is in Tucson. I'm not hundred percent sure, uh, where this is, but this is him. This is just, you know, showing that baseball has been in Arizona for a long time, but we weren't awarded a franchise until uh, 1990, uh, March 9th, 1995. Coangelo, Jerry Coangelo and his group uh, was awarded a franchise to begin play uh, in the 1998 season. It was a $130 million franchise fee. And um, they started breaking ground on Chase Field shortly after that. But 
How did, did we get to find the any bones? Name? Did they find they, some bones? They did not find. I don't. Oh, okay. I, I don't know that they any find, bones were. They found find a bobcat here. bone in there. Is that? But is this, this is how all mascots are born. This is an interesting picture, dude. Because I mean, this is. Uh, there's Joe Garagiola in the background here. Yeah. That's Jerry Coangelo. This is Fife Symington. Yeah, I was about to say that's Fife Symington. Who's the guy on the, the far left though? He looks. Familiar. I'm not sure. Uh, I probably. Uh, I I have no idea. So. Uh, yeah. Not sure, but I mean, you can still see this parking structure behind Chase Field, too, which is uh, interesting. But they were so confident that they were going to get a franchise that in February, they took out a full team, uh, a full page in the Arizona Republic uh, for a naming group uh, to, or for a naming contest. And the Diamondbacks is the one that won. Um what were the other choices? The, the scorpions were the big one because the scorpions and, and firebirds were a big one because those are the big two baseball teams that have been in the valley. Yeah, the before firebirds then. was actually a really big the, like the thunder. That was thunder. the uh the not, not the professional league that wasn't attached to major league baseball, right? Yeah, was that was a big league. Arizona that was a big Arizona thing uh back in the nineties. Right, right. So Arizona had been originally intended to join Tampa Bay in the American League, however. Five American League teams had threatened to block the league assignments because of concerns that they would have additional games out of their time zone. Once again, time zones causing issues. So on January 16, 1997, the Diamondbacks were officially voted into the National League, while their counterparts in Tampa Bay were voted to the American League. Uh, so um, th there was also some talks about the, uh, you know, potentially getting rid of the twins and expos at the time, which of course did not happen. The expos moved, but the twins stuck around. So that leads us to how we got to this gentleman right here, D Baxter and um, the, the Bobcat and not a snake. So, you know, the reason for this, right? Like I don't, I'm not breaking news to you. Correct? I don't remember it. I honestly don't. The most I know about Baxter is the alcohol problems. The people under the mask have had, I don't know his history and I don't remember it. Right. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it is not that interesting, but do you, you do remember that chase field was not the first name of our stadium. It was, bank one ballpark the bob. so oh yeah, yeah we called it the bob locally uh you're going out to the bob we're gonna watch the d-backs all that stuff so um uh, on june 23rd 2000 they unveiled uh d baxter and the idea for the mascot came from brantley bell son of former second baseman jay bell who explained to his dad the team should have gone with a bobcat as a mascot because they played at Bankwell Ballpark, oh, and that is where it came from. I or just, at least that's I hate it so much. What the lore is? Well, let me tell you something. There is something way more to be upset about than that. And by the way, here is me, just hammer drunk in Kansas City with my buddy Joe, and we see uh, um, D Baxter in Kansas City. So that picture I did have the Welsh. That one I did oh, find. So that's, that is young old. Look at that Bogman without a beard. Yep, no that beard. Guy, that about guy doesn't 60, look 70 like, pounds lighter. Yeah, that guy doesn't look like an expert on mascots. The guy right up there, that's a mascot expert. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this guy now is the mascot expert. Now that I've done all the work, and, and like you said, I uh, got. Um, uh, you know, the D Baxter has been arrested a bunch of times. There were a couple other guys. This is a Brady from, um, uh, morning sickness, morning sickness. This is him in, I believe 1999 or 2000. He is the chubby guy there with the purple on. There was a weird person mascot named drew Haybatter, Uh, and I don't remember this at all. Is this something you remember? No. I don't remember this at all, but uh, it is embarrassing. I, I think they came around. I don't around understand for, what you're saying. They, they were, you mean, they, you're they, they, they were the mascots? Before D Baxter, the, they had people mascots, and that's that's these guys. They, and I guess Brady was called Drew Haybatter. I have no idea what the other guy was called or if he was involved, but this is uh, Brady here with Jerry Coangelo and another guy. I, these I, were the I, guys that they had instead of actual, like, carpet mascots i just can't understand if you if you were having a follow-up series to this it would be why did they not just get a snake dude a snake i tried to boot. find it doesn't make sense i tried to find what, so many things about this mascot and the snake mascot the only thing that i could find was that the rattlers the arizona rattlers the arena football league team yeah. has a snake mascot and it looks kind of weird it doesn't look it's not horrifying or anything it just looks stupid a snake with arms and legs it looks dumb 
So not that any mascot looks great, but it, it just, looks better than just two people wearing a jersey. It does. It, that that's true. Like but that guy right there, that guy <laughs> was the mascot of the team. Like that's not a good representation. Yeah, a fat guy with his hat on backwards, which by the way is how half of the people in the stadium look. Like how can you tell that this guy is the mascot, right? Because totally. uh, anybody could have just ran on the field. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure there's a picture where I look exactly like this guy. So, uh but that leads to the most embarrassing part of uh, oh. Arizona Diamondbacks um, history with mascots. And that is Rat Leon. Uh, this is, we were at the ballpark with Jag this year. And we saw there were a bunch of rats in the background of this uh, cartoon thing that they did. I don't even remember what it was for Welsh, but we were like, what the fuck is going on with all these rats in the background? Are they saying there's a bunch of rats at Chase Field? No, it's what because New York. Yeah, apparently two years ago, we didn't really notice it, but they they have a new mascot named Rat Leon after the hashtag rattle on. I just... So if you thought Baxter, the Bobcat was embarrassing. How about this rat Welsh? Diamondbacks, uh, it's going to be really hard, Boggs, through this series for you to convince me uh, that anyone's more embarrassing. That is, uh, that's the most embarrassing thing. That outfit, that it's a rat, everything about it. It's, it's I'm so embarrassed right now for everybody. All right. Well, look, th there might be a more embarrassing uh, mascot here in the NL West. And let's move to where that would be to the San Francisco Giants. Now, the San Francisco Giants actually started out as the New York Gothams in 1883 in Great. New York. Uh, yeah, it, it is a fantastic name. Uh, they, they, um, moved to San Francisco in 1957, but the name change from the Gotham's to the giants was spurred by, uh, it, uh, the, uh, win over the Phillies in 1885 when then player slash manager, Jim Mutry, who is this gentleman, which I love this picture because it creeps me out so much. And I know it's yeah. going to do that to you. It looks like Jim Murtry here is staring through your soul, doesn't it? Yeah, his eyes are definitely a problem. He, I mean, he definitely looks like ah, Sasparilli, like have a little Sasparilli. Like, <laughs> he's got that look to him for sure. Yeah, he's a little, little freaky. But uh, the um, he yelled uh, after they beat the uh, you know then Phillies. He he be he said, "My big fellows, my giants." So a bunch of the reporters at the time started calling them the Giants of New York and all that stuff. And that is when they became the Giants. This was not the official day. It wasn't sometime in 1885. And, and we'll get into this when we get to the Dodgers. Like there are every pretty much every team in the 1800s was named the whatever location baseball club. That was like their official legal name. But they all had weird nicknames from all of the writers. And just personally, you know, people would call them different names. So. That is the story of the Giants. Not, It's not too in-depth. It's just, you know, they went from the Gothams, which I'm with you. I think that's better. But right. the Giants probably fit better for when oh, they Gotham moved Gotham is like the San New York Francisco. thing. So, yeah, right. you got to, yeah. I mean, it could have been the Golden Gates or, you know, a million other better names. But, okay, Giants. Now, the, uh, it's not, the Giants mascot story isn't very interesting because the name is Lou Seal. Uh, and he has been the mascot <laughs> since a, I'm a big dumb idiot. Cause that one made me laugh and I kind of, <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> so this was a, uh, write in contest in 1996. So the seal hasn't been around forever. He's been around forever for us, but Did they, you know, have they one, moved. They have one before they, No, they didn't. They, they oh. moved in 1957 and they didn't have a mascot uh, until, well, they did have one before and we're going to get into that in oh, okay. a second. But it was uh, what is called an anti mascot. But Lucille was written in um, in 1996. A bunch of people wrote in Lucille for the seal mascot. And uh, July 25th, 1996, there were I think it was six or seven people that wrote in specifically Lucille. There were a bunch of people that wrote in for a seal because obviously in San Francisco you're by the bay, tons yep. of seals and all that stuff. But six or seven people actually wrote in Lucille, and since they did that name, they gave all those. They gave all six people that wrote in tickets to this game 
when he was, you know, quote unquote, born in San Francisco, July 25th, 1996. Did they, did they get a big picture of a, of a, yeah. of a mama seal and just have nope. it you know, be like a Vince, uh, Ace, Ventura be a little coming out the, Ace Ventura coming out the play? <laughs> that would be a little dicey. They did not do that. But oh, okay. there was a mascot before Lucille. And this is uh, one of the most fun mascot things that I think we're going to have throughout this series. And it was in 1984, the Giants had what is called an anti-mascot, which means people just pretty much hated him. And his name is Crazy Crap. And this is a picture oh of him right my here. my God. Yeah, it is very disturbing, but it got to be real, real bad. There was a commercial when Frank Robinson was the manager of the Giants at this time, and there was a commercial where he had to be restrained from going and beating up uh, the crazy crap and people hated him. That's what he was there for though, was for people to boo him because pe I guess at this point they'd had enough of mascots around the league and a bunch of managers. This was when Tommy Lasorda was fighting the Philly fanatic and stuff. So people started to hate mascots. Like it, it had grown old to them. So players would throw rosin bags at him and knock him over. And, um, they, they had to, uh, the, some people uh, beat him up, I believe. And that is why he eventually had to quit and he only lasted one year. Wow. Uh, but he Surprised was the, in the Oakland mascot. That'd be more Oakland <laughs> than San Francisco. <laughs> but he was the inspiration for the crazy crap sandwich, which is now available at mm. uh, the ballpark in San Francisco. That looks pretty bomb. So, looks yeah, pretty it looks really good, actually. It yeah. does. And What's that bread? It, it looks like garlic bread. It, 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 you know what? I bet it is because garlic fries uh, originated at, uh, you know, the uh, the ballpark in San Francisco there. And they had them uh, at Chase Field for a while. I think they got rid of them for whatever reason. But, uh, so we're yeah. So we're eating the old mascot is what's happened. Right, pretty much. So the gotcha. yeah, Crazy Crab is gone, but he did inspire a sandwich that lives on to this day, the Welsh. So Excellent. I figured... You would like to know that uh, they did have Reddit found this one, a different mascot, which was a T-Rex, which looks like a nerdy T-Rex with glasses. Um, but this is the only instance. It seems like every other thing about this, uh, th this T-Rex has been wiped from the planet. Like I can't yeah. find anything else on it. It was just a picture and looks they like, called it, it looks like dinosaur Jeffrey Tambor. Like that's what <laughs> it looks like. Uh they called it Gigantosaurus. Uh and, and this is the best part. Oh, this gigantic, is people uh people were very upset that his he was born twenty five thousand years ago. Oh uh, yeah well, in San Francisco I mean, instead of millions religious, and millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be careful. Yep. Careful. Dinosaurs so that got real. a little bit dicey, but those are the mascots that have had, I guess, have been in work in San Francisco. There was a T-Rex right. for a little bit. We had crazy crab, but Lucille, Lucille is now the main one, which made you laugh, which it makes did me, make me laugh. I liked it. Uh, now let's go to the San Diego Padres. Uh, and the Padres are named after the Spanish missions that founded the city of San Diego in 1769. And nice. the um, name was first used for a baseball team when Bill Lane, who was a Hollywood superstar at the point, uh, he actually, the, the, his team shared a stadium with the angels, um, but they bumped the rent up in 1936. And he said, well, screw this. I can go build my own stadium in San Diego on the water for cheaper. And he did it. Mm -hmm. So this is a stadium. This is the first Padre stadium. And they were a, a PCL team until 1969 so they were a professional team in triple a you know what we now know as triple a uh in the pcl from 1936 to 1969 and this is their original ballpark and you can see it is right next to the water here well yeah, so that's great i found that pretty interesting um but uh then the, the where where did the mascot come from because we know that it is a padre, which is, you know, fathers. That's why we have the dads podcast. Everybody calls them the dads. But originally they had, um, uh, it's the swinging friar is, is the mascot. But they didn't have a mascot originally like they do now. They had a person playing the friar. So like this or, and I found this from Robin Hood, Prince friar of Thieves. Yeah. yeah, this is Friar Tuck. But the Friar Tuck from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the Welsh is, uh, disturbing because to me it is a look into the ghost of Christmas future. So <laughs> I, I don't like this very much. I but, like it very much, actually. Will you do yeah. the face? Do the face real quick. Do his face and turn your head the other direction. 
No, no, like his direction. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He's looking straight on, so I don't yeah. know. Well, he's got his head tilted just a little bit like this. Like this? Yeah, that, it's it's pretty stark. It's pretty yeah. amazing, actually. Yeah, Ghost of Christmas Future. I do not like it that this guy. If but... you had bad hair, that would be that would. Be <laughs> yeah, if I was balding, yeah, that's yeah. why I said Ghost of Christmas Future. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 1996 is when we got this gentleman right here, the mascot version of the Swinging Friar. Who I gotta say, the Welsh, he looks insane to me. He looks absolutely nutso in that picture. That is, I would be terrified as a child to see some big, partly balding, like, I, I don't know, friar come up at you. He is terrifying. Not but, as terrifying as the rat, but pretty close. But look, the swinging friar is the official mascot. Nobody gives two shits about the swinging friar in San Diego because if you're from San Diego, it's all about the San Diego chicken who in this mm. picture looks like he's being cross-examined uh, for, for something. I don't know why I love this picture because he looks like he's in an interrogation. It looks, it looks like Chris Matthews just came in. Uh, Mr. Chicken, <laughs> please take a seat. Chicken. Why'd you take yeah. a seat? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so the first appearance of the San Diego chicken was in an animated TV commercial for a radio station called KGB FM in San Diego. They eventually hired Ted Giannalis to wear the outfit in 1974. And this is a creepy picture of yeah. the chicken uh, laying out with his legs sprawled and all yeah, that stuff. The chicken has his own logo too. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. He, the chicken. Yeah. Look, it looks like, yeah, this looks like a uh, fast food logo. Yeah. Here, like he has his own does. logo. It's not like the Padres logo. So this was a radio station mascot that they just started implementing into the Padres. Right. So his first appearance for the San Diego chicken ever was at the San Diego zoo on Easter. He was handing out candy to kids. And uh, then he went on to do 520 Padres games in a row. He did concerts. He did Clippers games when the Clippers were originally in San Diego and many other performances. Um, KGB Ra radio fired Ted Giannalis, who is this gentleman in 1979. He eventually sued to continue performing as the chicken and won, although he had to get a new uniform and renamed it the famous chicken. And the famous chicken, and I couldn't find any pictures of it, the Welsh. So this is disappointing to me, but he was in a Saturday morning children's radio show with Tommy Lasorda and Johnny Bench. It ran for five seasons. It won Emmys. And the San Diego chicken was the comic relief in this show. So I couldn't find any pictures or anything of this show. And I don't know, maybe it just ran in San Diego or something. Uh, I don't know, but it wow. was, it only ran for five seasons. But that was interesting. And um, the uh, because of the widespread popularity of mascots, the uh, after the San Diego chicken and, you know, um, they the San Diego chicken, this might be the most ridiculous mascot fact you're going to find the Welsh was named uh, one of the top 100 most powerful people in sports of the 20th century by the sporting news. So that's so embarrassing. Uh, I mean, but the, the San Diego chicken is, you know, embarrassing. Uh, I, okay. He's embarrassing, but yeah. let's go to the last team, which of course is the land Los Angeles Dodgers. And you, you may be asking yourself, what the fuck is a Dodger? Now, I, I, as I actually, I don't even, not only do I not know what a Dodger is, except unless they're draft Dodgers. I also <laughs> could not tell you what their mascot is. I don't even know what it is. Well, that is because the Dodgers are one of three teams in Major League Baseball without an official mascot. Really? No mascot for the Dodgers. But Good let's talk them. about how they got this name. And uh, they were formed in 1883 by Charles Bryce. And uh, and his brother-in-law funded him as well. He was a big casino guy. But uh, the very first name of the Dodgers in 1883 was the Grays because they wore gray uniforms. And after that, they went on to get... Many, many, many different names before they were officially the Dodgers. Uh, after the Grays in 1888, they were uh, just they were called the Bridegrooms, and this is the 1888 Bridegrooms. This is wow. the worst picture of the worst photo I may have ever seen, but it's from 1888. This is Brooklyn Ball Club, 1888 yeah. at the bottom. Brooklyn Ball Club, but once again, like we mentioned before, the official name changes didn't really happen, right? They were called a bunch of different names, but the first nickname 
they were given was in 1888 and was the grooms or bridegrooms because six players got married over the course of the season. So six of these suckers got married right here in this picture during the, the season. That's wow. why they were called the grooms. Um, the first use of the trolley Dodgers was in 1916 or 1915, I think. So this is 1915. This is the first time they're called the Trolley Dodgers. And the a Dodger, and this is a game, and this is how different the world is now, uh, but kids used to stand in front of the trolleys in Brooklyn and then jump out of the way at the last second. Uh, that This was a game that kids played hmm. on the tracks was they would jump out of the way of the trolley barreling down of them. Sounds so that great. is why they're great called parenting. the Dodgers. Yeah, great right. parenting. No wonder our uh no wonder the actual like human race was so little uh back in those times <laughs> that we've doubled and tripled over recent times. That sounds like a great game, kids. Yeah, but so the first formal use of Dodgers was in 1916 when it first appeared on a World Series ticket. I couldn't find the ticket, but uh then in 1932 they became the uh, they put Dodgers on the uniform. This is a picture of the first Dodgers uh, style uniform. You can see it's a zipper, which is very strange. Uh, but um, this was 1932. And then 1933, they uh, put Dodgers on the away uh, uniforms as well. So that was kind mm -hmm. of the official one. But they had other nicknames, including Ward's Wonders, the Superbas, this is the um, this is the Superbas team in 1895, and the Robins, and this is the Su Superbas logo That's right just here. The Tigers as a B. Yeah, it is. It's an old English B, and this is uh, I believe this is the Robins team right here. Uh, this is a team that was called the Robins for a year, but in 1933 they um, officially made the team name, the team change uh, name change to the Dodgers. And then they moved to Los Angeles in 1958 and just kept the name, but they don't have a mascot. Like we mentioned before, but they were referred to as Dem bums, right? Everyone knows, or a lot of people have heard the story of Brooklyn being called the bums, right? Um, and the other two teams without a mascot, by the way, are the Yankees and angels. So no official mascot for those two teams, but, um, this was from cartoonist Willard Mullen. He created the Brooklyn bum character and after that, while they never had an official mascot, Emmett Kelly, who was a famous uh, clown, and he named he made a clown called Weary Willie, and uh, that is this gentleman. Or here's the Brooklyn Bums uh, logo that the, they use in cartoons and stuff. That was him. And then this gentleman is uh, uh, Emmett Kelly, and this is him being Weary Willie. I'm and in. because they were the bums, that was. This is this guy showed up to games just unannounced and would be dancing around in the stands and stuff, uh, looking depressed like that this. is horrifying. Yeah, it's not great. <clears throat> that uh, can I take this off the screen? Yes, I'll yes, take that please off do. the screen. That is horrifying. You know what I would be interested in though, and if anyone wants to partake in this uh, for the next video under this video, I would die to know what do you think could be the first logo or the, I'm sorry, the first mascot for the Dodgers. Cause at some point you feel like they're going to break. You feel like all these, the angels had a pseudo one in the rally monkey. Uh, yeah. It's a pseudo one. The Yankees have never really had anything, but for the Dodgers specifically under this NL West one, give us what you think someday could be the first Dodgers mascot. I would love to know. And if you have I feel like, this is going to get dicey. Uh, I feel like it's okay. Gonna be, yeah, it's there's okay. going to be some rude ones. We which might, I'm uh, all for. we might, uh, we can maybe talk about them at the beginning of the next uh, mascot series because apparently I'm going to be on all of these. Bogman, that's right. So. That's right. You wrote me and I wrote you back in. That's how we do it. Congratulations. You did it. Bogman did the NL West. That was it. What's coming up next? Uh, next, we will do the NL Central. So we'll be getting the Cardinals and the Brewers and all those teams. So look for that one to be coming soon. A couple well, weeks. Support your boy. Make sure uh, you guys are subscribed on YouTube uh, right here on this channel. Give a little like to make sure that you like all of Bogman's good work. And more mascot series are coming right here on In This League. And come and find us over at patreon.com slash ITL Army for extended mascot talk and a whole bunch more. Is there anything else you need to give us for mascots in the NL West or 
Can we move on? Did Bogman officially do the mascots? I think we've done the NL West, and it's time to move across the country to the Central. So give us the tagline at the end. What does Bogman do? Bogman does nothing.